on the vlog again. Just can't wait to do a vlog again. The life I love is making vlogs for my friends. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Doing a vlog again. Going places that I've never been. Seeing things that I may never see again. And I can't wait to do a vlog again. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Top Vloggers. As always, I am your host, Hi and Mighty Joe, hanging out with... Your co-host, the lovely cat. And as you can see, we have Aaron in the back. It should be another great vlog today. You can join us on all of our social media websites, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Top Vloggers. Also, if you'd like to help us reach the top, you can do so by going to www.patreon.com backslash The Top Vloggers. Without your help and support, these vlogs will be almost impossible to do. There will be a link in the description below. And if you're new here, you can hit that subscribe button, take it one step further, and ring that notification bell to keep you up to date on all the future adventures that will be going on on our channel. So let's get going. Today's adventure brings us to Lagro, Indiana. Let's take a drive around and learn a little bit more about this place. Lagro was one of the two original townships into which the county was divided soon after its creation in 1835. In 1836, it was first carved eight miles square of its northern sections going to form Chester and the same area of its southern territory being erected into Liberty Township. In 1846, Lagro regretted its generosity and recovered two miles from the north of Liberty and subsequently favored Chester with a mile of its own territory. The other changes which have brought Lagro Township to its present irregular shape have resulted in donating about 13 sections of land to Noble Township, leaving it with an area of about 85 sections, which is a little less than that of Noble, that is, Lagro Township, to which the following descriptive and historical matter applies. The chief streams in Lagro Township are the Wabash and its branch, the Salamone River, and it is mainly to them that the region owes its early settlement and the most interesting feature of its pioneer history. The Wabash River enters the township and the county nearly midway of the length of the township and flows in a general southwesterly direction to the city of Wabash, about a mile and a half beyond its western limits. The course of the stream is quite regular, having no extensive bends, one of the largest being just south of Lagro and west of the mouth of the Salamone. The Wabash is a comparatively large stream in Lagro Township with high bluffy and sometimes rocky banks. Heavy freshets sometimes occur in the main portion of the Lagro being on comparatively level ground, the town has been a great sufferer from these overflows upon several occasions. The town was the most seriously underwater during the ice jams and floods of 1883 and 1913. The only machinery in Lagro Township ever propelled by the Wabash proper was Lynn's Mill near Old Belden Post Office where the stream enters the county from Huntington. The surface of South Lagro away from the streams is rolling and beautiful on the Salamone. As on Brush Creek, it is very rough with steep hills and banks, but the soil is uniformly good, consisting of clay loam, which inclines occasionally to sandy. Originally, the surface was heavily timbered, white and burr oak, ash, elm, hickory, beech, sugar, lin, walnut, and poplar were abundant, but the old wooded tracks have been largely cleared without being replaced by second growths. Speaking in general terms, the first land entries and the first settlements in Lagro Township were made in a strip of country lying about a mile and a half either side of the Wabash River and along the upper Salamone to its mouth. Different parts of sections 1, 2, 6, 12, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35 were entered in the period 1827 to 1833 by Jeremiah Cox, Austin W. Morris, J. L. Wines, Israel T. Canby, W. Daniels, Samuel Hanna, Lewis Rogers, John Hurley, Robert Hurley, Samuel Wiley, A. N. Grover, Levi Bean, John Spray, John Townsend, Jacob Chapel, and Edward B. Walker. In 1827, three entries were made covering 174.47 acres. 1839 entries 
946.32 acres, 1832 two entries, 173.80 acres, 1833 10 entries, 1842.28 acres, or nearly three sections. Most of these entries were for settlement or improvement. Jeremiah Cox, who made the first three entries in 1827, was a well-known miller of Wayne and Randolph counties. They embraced about 200 acres east and north of its mouth of the Salamone River for a mile up that stream and a half a mile up the Wabash. His idea of being to secure favorable mill sites, the three entries of J.L. Wines were made in 1830, gave him about three quarters of a mile on both sides of the Salamone in sections 1 and 12, just below Dora. Messrs. Daniel and Canby, the same year, made entries about two miles northwest of Lagro, and Morris entered his land on the north side of the Wabash near the mouth of the Inyart Creek. Hannah's parcel of land entered in 1832 was about three miles below the town of Lagro on the north side of the Wabash and Rogers land on the south side, not quite a mile below the mouth of Lagro Creek. The banner year for the entries was 1833. John Hurley selected a quarter of a section of 11 south of the Salamone and half mile distant. And Robert Hurley had an adjoining quarter in section 2. Samuel Wiley's track entered the same year was in section 33, a mile and a half west of Lagro. Spray, Townsend, and Bean made selections several miles from nowhere. Messer and Townsend chose tracks up Lagro Creek in the neighborhood of what afterward became Hopewell Church, the former selecting a parcel in section 14 and Mr. Townsend all of section 23. They were three miles from most of the entries along the Salamone. Levi Bean ventured several miles into the east, his entry of 200 acres being about a mile west of Belden or the eastern township limits. Walker's entries the last one made in 1833, October 12th, was the southwest quarter of Section 27, northwest of the town of Lagro and Lagro Creek. Now, as to the actual settlers, the weight of evidence is in favor of according the honor of first permanent resident of the township of Lewis Rogers, who in 1831 lived for several months in the brick house built by the United States government for Chief Les Gross within the present corporate limits of the town of Lagro. Shortly thereafter, Robert McClure, brother of Samuel, obtained a lease from General John Tipton of certain lands lying on the north side of the Wabash opposite the mouth of the Salamone and built a cabin there. During the year, he disposed of his lease to Mr. Rogers, who commenced to operate a ferry which had been started not long before by Joseph and Champion Helvey, discontinued as an unprofitable venture and moved to Huntington. But Mr. Rogers was not of their opinion. The ferry was in line with the old Indian trail, which had become a favorite horseback route from Grant and Delaware counties, and other settled regions of the south to northern Indiana and the lake region at Michigan City. The mouth of the Salamone, which was the southern landing place of the ferry, had always been a popular rendezvous for both Indians and white men. There was a ford across the Wabash lower down, but it was difficult and not without danger when the water was high. Therefore, Rogers Ferry, which he commenced to operate regularly as a frequently, as he had customers, proved a great public convenience. When work commenced on the Wabash and Erie Canal in 1834, and the town of Lagrelle on the northern banks of the Wabash sprung up in a day, Rogers Ferry was more than ever an indispensable institution. The ferry was, in fact, maintained at that point until the bridge was built across the Wabash about 1857. And right there is the hot dog and ice cream place. Several towns have risen and fallen in Lagro Township. Some of them have entirely disappeared. Others declined into mere post offices and were finally absorbed by the rural routes, and several are still thriving. And we've come across two different post offices uh, right here today in Lagro, so that uh, obviously uh, shows that the uh, town, towns still uh, have the post offices from some of the towns before. Uh, as we uh, exit uh, 
the town here. Well, thank you so much for coming on this vlog. I hope you guys had a great time. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to bring this one to you. Uh, I always enjoy the histories and the drive-throughs uh, of a town. Uh, some You can learn so much just by driving through a town. Uh, and how great was it to see that giant hot dog and uh, ice cream on the side of that building? Um, the building only sells, apparently, uh, hot dogs and ice cream, which is totally great with me because I love both of those. It was very interesting being able to drive through. I've never been to LaGro, Indiana before. And I think that's going to do it for us here today. We will see you again tomorrow with another vlog for each and every single one of you. Until tomorrow, Top Vloggers, out.